August 21st, 1984, this is Joe Todd and Bernice Jackson with an interview with Fred H. Hudson. So where were you born? I was born nine miles north of Fargo. And when's your birthday? October the 22nd. I was born 1908. Who was your father? Lee. Well, R. L. Hudson. R. L. Hudson. And who was your mother? Uh, Ida Bell Hudson. Do you want her maiden name? Yeah. Her maiden name was Howell. H. O. W. E. L. L. Okay. And that's what this stands for. Okay. Where were your parents from? My mother was raised on Gaither Mountain, southwest of Harrison, Arkansas, and my father was raised on a farm about seven miles south and a little bit east of Harrison, Arkansas. You're both from Arkansas, then? Yes, sir. When did they come to Oklahoma? Well, they came to Oklahoma, I don't know what year, it was the early 1900s. Because it's before I was born. Yeah. Did they tell you why they came here? Well, Dad, Dad thought that he could file on land out here, and that there was land to be filed on. He was from a large family back there, and so he just brought his family and came west. Did he get a homestead? Yes, sir. Is that where you were born? No. I was born. I was born on a rented place before he built on the home on the land he filed on. Where was the homestead? The homestead was seven miles directly west of Fort Supply, and the house sat a quarter of a mile south of that corner. Mm -hmm. okay. Was it a quarter quarter section? Yes, sir. Okay. And I assume your father was a farmer. Yes, sir. Okay. As a boy, what chores did you do around the farm? Well, we had our assignments. There was eight of each children, five boys and three girls. And we had our assignments and responsibilities. And if we wasn't going to get them done, we made a rain for somebody else to do it. One of the first things that I can remember doing was trying to learn to milk a cow by him. And of course, they would give we beginners the easier cows to milk. Um, but we we didn't have a dairy or anything, it was just a common cow herd on the farm. How many cows did you have to milk? Well, we'd have normally from 10 to 15 to milk, and then we had stock cattle too. He added to this quarter section right along. He, in fact, he added an 80 and another quarter to it. What crops did you raise in the farm? Uh, wheat and uh, quite a bit of kaffir and maize. And we raised some oats for the for feed. Was the, the horses. Maize and the kaffir corn strictly feed for the cattle? No, we sold some of it, but it was it was primarily the stock pasture and so forth, and primarily feed for the stock cattle. Okay. Uh, we would raise some sowed feed, uh, what we called sowed feed, where we drilled it. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, a sorghum type sowed feed. Okay. How many acres did you have in wheat? Any idea? Well, Dad would rent some ground, and uh, there was there was times that he had we had several acres in wheat. And uh, as as we as the family progressed, my oldest brother Arlie took over on the farm out there, and Dad traveled for Hawkeye Buggy Company. He was a collector and a sales for Hawkeye Buggy. And he traveled with a team and, and a buggy. What is the difference between the Hawkeye Buggy and another buggy? What is... What was the difference? Yeah. I don't know that I... I was so small at, that time, at this time that I don't know I could tell you the difference, except that the buggies you sold had Hawkeye on them. That's about all I know about. <laughs> what maintenance did you have to pull on the buggies? Pardon? What maintenance did you have to do on the buggies to keep it running properly? 
Well, of course you grease them. And, uh, but I, I can't remember a whole lot of maintenance. They had side curtains at, at different times. We, we either had a two-seated hack that we drove to church, and it was five and a half miles to church each way. Mm -hmm. And we went to the Mount Olive Methodist Church, southwest of Port Supply, as a youngster. And, um, we, and then we also went in a buggy, pure and number was going. We had both at the farm all, most all the time. Mm -hmm. How many acres could you plow in one day? How many horses was hitched onto this plow, and what kind of plow did you use? Well, he used a mold board part of the time, but mostly we used a disc plow. And uh, we also used a lister and then pulled the ridges in, or broke the ridges and then pulled the dirt back in. So uh, we, we had anywhere up to six head in a team down to lighter implements, we had two heads, so mm -hmm. it could be uh, anything in between there. And we did all of our farming as a, when I was a youngster with horses and mules, and we broke mules constantly. We was, Dad built a barn, especially to make mules in. Did you prefer playing with horses or mules? Did I, which did I prefer? Yeah. Uh, well, horses were, more understanding. They were more, uh, I'd say, mules had honor streaks in them, but as far as being able to work, a mule could handle more work than a horse could, uh, generally. And mules would recover quicker. You turn them out tonight, and then in the morning they was kicking and ready to go. And the horse wouldn't necessarily recover that fast. But we didn't have large horses. We didn't have perching type horses. We just had small horses. Mm -hmm. Where did you start the school? Where did I start the school? Yes, sir. Hudson Valley School. Hudson Valley. Rural school. Was it named for your family? It was named for my family because Dad gave him the land on the corner of his place. Uh, right north of the house, it fell on the corner of the land, the corner of the quarter section. Now, the quarter section was a mile long and a quarter of a mile wide. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, he made the statement. Uh, that I later learned that he uh, he gave him, he did the land to him as long as there was a school there, mm -hmm. and he did that because he felt like it would be an advantage to his children not to have to go so far to school. In mm -hmm. fact, we could go home at noons for lunches a lot of the time, mm -hmm. and that beat carrying a cold lunch you know, yes. for a youngster yeah. going to school. Some of them come as far as well, right at two miles. Some of mm -hmm. them coming to school. Mm -hmm. And that made a transportation problem for those parents because they either drove a buggy or rode a horse or something. They couldn't Did they have them. all eight grades? Eight grades, yes. Eight and grades. one teacher? One teacher. And approximately how many students? Oh, I'd say most of the time uh, 30, 30 plus. Mm -hmm. and, Did you have older boys in school? Boys 18, In 19? our family? Oh, no, older school. boys. Yes, at times we did, and uh, they were a little bit hard for a young lady school teacher to handle. Manage, no, they yeah. just, they wanted us, they weren't necessarily up there to study. <laughs> <laughs> you want to know the truth of matter. Mm -hmm. They just didn't have anything else to do, so they went Well, they just go to school a little longer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, we haven't said anything about Dunlap. No, but we're going to in just we're a minute. All right. We're getting to it. Did, um, do you remember World War One? Yes, I was born in 1908, so World War One, I was probably eight, and by the time it was over, I was probably 10, mm -hmm. as I remember. I remember having the flu. I was a very, very sick youngster during World War One. The big flu epidemic. Yes, and uh, I, I run quite a fever. And I, I have memories from that that stay linger with me yet. That flu, but uh, what do you remember about it? What do I remember about it? Yeah. Well, mother did the best she could. Neighbors come out and helped and so forth. And 
And I just remember one time that I floated off to dark space and I didn't think I'd ever be back. Mm -hmm. But you made it. Anything happen in that dark space? No, I just, it just seemed to me like I just floated off into a dark chasm. Mm -hmm. And uh, the next thing I knew, I was awake and was talking to me. Mm -hmm. that's, that's about all I remember. What kind of medicines did they use? Or? Well, I, I, I can't, I don't know whether I can name the medicines or not. I remember when I was young that I took uh, castor oil and I took uh, the usual medicines, but, uh, and I remember taking turpentine on sugar. Yes, I remember that. Oh, and that wasn't very good, but, <laughs> but it, uh, I guess it helped. <laughs> I guess so. That was my daddy's remedy, too. <laughs> so I can remember taking that. An old boy. Mm -hmm. Who I, was your doctor when you were sick with the flu? Uh, well, doc, doctor, uh, oh shoot, Ble uh, Dr. Westfall, Fort Supply. Westfall, yes. I remember him. Dr. Westfall, Fort Supply. Yes. Dr. Fred Patterson delivered me when I was born. Uh, that's where I got my first name. Mm -hmm. I was named for him. Where did you attend high school at? I attended high school in Woodward all but one semester. I attended one semester at Fort Supply. Mm -hmm. And you graduated where? At Woodward. At Woodward. Mm -hmm. What year did you graduate? 1928. 1928. What was it like to be in high school in the 20s? I've heard about well, the flappers. Oh. I I don't know. I, I I think I'd preface that with another statement if I could. There's very few youngsters that have the privilege that I had in growing up on a farm that you farmed with horses and you had all the animals around you. And to me, I was blessed. Now, as far as high school in, in the 20s, most all the youngsters that was there uh, studied uh, quite a bit to their abilities. There were some that didn't, mm -hmm. obviously. I was a type boy that didn't want to get in trouble with anybody. And I didn't aim to get in any trouble with the school officials or anyone else. So I got along very well in school. I didn't make real high grades, but I got along very well. I had no problems. I don't know, uh, they seemed to me like, back as I remember, they taught more of the three R's and less of the science they've got today. Um, I'm not passing any judgment, I'm just saying what they taught. Mm -hmm. hmm. I don't know whether I answer that question for you or not, but yeah. I... Who did they name the ten have done that after? I've been told that, but I'm not positive who it was named after, sir. Mm -hmm. uh, seemed to me like it was a man that, that uh, run a dray out, out there and started the town for Fort Supply, but I could be wrong about that. Where is the town located? Where is Dunlop located? Yeah. It's about halfway between the town of uh, Fort Supply and, and the town of May. Okay. And uh, it's off to the right of the present highway. Did you live there? Did I live at Dunlop? No, a farm that I was raised on was, was three miles and a quarter from Dunlop. Mm -hmm. My house was. And, uh, and two south and one west. How big was Dunlap? It was a pretty good sized little trading center at one time. Mm -hmm. there, was, there was a hardware store, two grocery stores, a barber shop, a hotel. There was a train that came through there, so there was a depot. Who ran the different stores? Remember the proprietors? That comes a little hard. Is that where you folks did your training? Some, but we actually did a bigger part of our shopping at Fort Supply. Mm -hmm. What did the town of Dunlap look like? Well, there's two elevators. Uh, you, if you come out of town in the south, there's two elevators. There's a liver barn there that that. Jimmy Howell, if I may call him Jimmy, 
Jimmy Howell operated, and he was a horseman. He was a trader, and uh, he'd also race horses a little out in the pasture if nowhere else. Mm -hmm. And uh, then, then you went by the elevators and you went down to the more the main part of town. That's where you found the grocery stores and the cream station and the barber shop and and the hardware store and the hotel was back up toward the depot. And the depot was off the to the right as you went in town. Mm -hmm. And I think that's most of the businesses that were there that time. Yeah. What did you do for recreation? Did you have football games and I mean baseball games? Did you have a big baseball team that played other towns? Uh, Dunlap did when I was a small boy. Mm -hmm. They didn't later. On. I didn't participate with it. But you didn't. My older brothers did. And that's what I thought. And, uh, and of course, the Sand Rats had a team that was up north of Dunlap, the Sand Hills. Yeah. And uh, I could I could think of some of those names, but uh, I remember Ray Brandt pitching. I remember Glenn catching. Harley played first base. I remember some of those things. But. Mm -hmm. Uh, later, I played some ball, but as youngsters growing up, we didn't have to have a lot of entertainment. We made our own entertainment. Mm -hmm. My brother Bob and I played by the hour, but we knew one thing, that if we took a halter or something out of the bar to use a plan, we could put a halter on it, make a harness out of it, and pull a pretty good load. But we knew that we had better put that holder back where it belonged because they might come in after dark with the teams from the field and that holder better be there. <laughs> we do. Because my dad was organized enough that you could go into his barn and you could harness a team in the dark. You could unharness a team in the dark and hang the harness up and do all that. That's just the way he taught we boys. And uh, I can remember another thing. Uh, as I said, there's five boys, and he built a house there on this place, and there's two bedrooms upstairs. Um, uh, he and mother slept downstairs, but the girls had the south room, the boys had the north room, regardless of how many was there. Um, he walked to the foot of the stairs, and he wouldn't yell, he would just say, boys, and that meant it was time to get up, and we got up. We didn't fool around about it. We didn't lay back down and see if we go to sleep. We just got up. We learned that. We young ones learned that fast. It didn't take us long. Uh, now, to get back to Dunlap, where was this uh, train? Was that this MK and T that run? Yes, down it was the a K. Well, yeah. did it run down next to the uh, river, or was it out pretty close to the highway where it is now? Uh, through Dunlap. Uh -huh. He ran out through the south edge of Dunlap, and Dunlap was uh, almost, it was a little over a quarter of a mile from where the highway is now. The highway now is on a half mile line. Oh. It's not on a section line. And Dunlap reached the section line on the north, but it built south of that section line. Uh -huh. So, the tr and the train was along the south edge of town. I see. It didn't hit the river until it got up west of Dunlap a ways. Uh -huh. And where the river come around the bend. Mm -hmm. uh, it's very pretty down in there. Well, Jimmy Howell had a house right across from Lever Barn, and he had fruit trees and trees. And, uh, the L. C. Smith place was right north of Dunlap, across the road. And Smith Layer had a hardware store in Fort Supply, or one time did, I remember. Mm -hmm. uh, he. Uh, his daughter, Smith, girl, married Ed Hughes, and uh, she's still living. Ed's deceased. Oh, she is? Could yes. we interview her, you think? I don't know. She lives in Fort Supply. Oh, she does? Yeah. She, she'd be Lil Hughes. Okay. Now then, uh, what caused Dunlap to disappear? Well, it disappeared I, long I failed to mention one thing. Of course, Dunlap had a post office back in those days. Oh. And it held on to the post office when about everything else is gone. Mm -hmm. They they had a little store there and they had a post office in the back of it. Then they finally put a, a post office in a trailer mm -hmm. and kept it there. Mm -hmm. 
until finally they rolled out. They done away with the post office and rolled out come around. What year was that when they did away with the post office? Where was I? No, what year did they do away with the? About 1938. Mm -hmm. Well, it wasn't because of the railroad leaving the country. It was something happened that the town. Well, uh, you're. Didn't it disappear long before the railroad was in Oh, yes. You still had an elevator there. Oh. People marketed their wheat. Yes. But that's about all that was left there, mm -hmm. was the elevator and the post office for years. Well, a little store for a while. Mm -hmm. A little store just didn't do any volume of business. It was just a small country store. And uh, I can't... Uh, I can't say what caused it any more than any other towns that just dried up. They went to bigger because, places. Yes, May pretty well dried up. Yes. And um, if you didn't have the Western State Hospital out here, Fort Supply had been, and, and the dam they built, mm -hmm. Fort Supply had been dried up pretty well now. Yes. Uh, that's just what happened to little towns. Well, what was built up next to the highway? There used to be a building oh. there on the corner. Well, Jack Howell, I was one of Jimmy Howell's boys. Uh, had a service station up there on the highway for a little while. Yes. And he lived up there. He built a house and lived up there. Uh, that's about all I uh, he just know about that. He just he just built up there on the highway. And uh, didn't we hear that there was a lot of gambling games went on there? <laughs> we won't tell the good and the bad. Don't call any names. <laughs> From Michelle at all? I, I've been told that they played a little poker uh, around <laughs> uh, around some of those places, but I I can't say for a fact because I just never participated. I'm you didn't see them? I didn't see them, no. It didn't see them. It was hearsay with me. I don't know whether they did or not. <laughs> well, it was hearsay with me, too. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised but what they did. I imagine there was poker games going on in all of these little towns in that day, in that era. Poker games and dice games, I think. It's still was. going on, of oh, course. Yes, at least the poker still going on. <laughs> so, <laughs> that, but I never was, I was a little too, I don't know, too conservative to be a gambler. Mm -hmm. And I still am. Mm -hmm. I'm not much of a gambler. Yeah. That's the ball I remember about Dunlap. I, I know that uh, at one time it was a pretty good little town. And then at this, with an old hardware store, the, the concrete walls, was poured concrete, those walls, of that hardware store. And those walls stood for years. Mm -hmm. I know, I could see them. You could see those walls from mm -hmm. the highway. I wanted to go down and look at them. And those walls stood for years. Are they still there? I don't think they are. It just looks no. like a pile of junk out there, just like that. I animals. just don't think they are. Mm -hmm. About the only thing that's still there is the Jimmy Howell house. Anybody Cause living there? Uh, Sterling, Sterling Howell lived there the last of anyone that I knew, but I can't say. I, I'm told that, that uh, Ben Brooks owned that land now. Oh. And I don't know about that, mm -hmm. but I was told that. And uh, so I doubt if it's if I live there. Mm -hmm. It might be. What could you tell us about uh, Fort Supply that you can remember back in that era? Well, I remember quite a few things about it. Uh, one of the first stores I remember in Fort Supply was Gandy's store. It was a general store. Mm -hmm. G-A-N-D-Y-S. The brick building is still sitting there on the south side that Gandhi store was in. Mm -hmm. uh, it's the first building west of where the old barber shop used to be, where they mm -hmm. made a, uh, they moved the old barber shop into this museum. Mm -hmm. And Prairie Davis had a drugstore there. Mm -hmm. um, Burl Million and Percy Zerby was in the bank. And uh, Maud Vaughn was the first postmistress I remember. No, no, Mr. Creel was the first postmaster I remember. And then Maud Vaughn. Mm -hmm. 
Lord who? Vaughn. Lon. Vaughn. B a u g h n. She married Red Vaughn. It was raised right up south edge on the hill where Clark lives, or lived did live. Mm -hmm. uh, there was Larry Barn, of course, in Fort Supply. Mm -hmm. Levi Hurst had a Ford garage in Fort Supply where the tile building is now that Lee Wilson bought to use for a shop mm -hmm. later. And the old Smith rooming house is still sitting there in Fort Supply on the north mm -hmm. side of the street next mm -hmm. to that church. Yes. And there's some buildings in Fort Supply still there that was there a long time ago. Mm -hmm. And I lived out north of this Ford garage when I was in the fourth grade for a little while. Mm -hmm. We lived in there. And then we went back to the farm. And then I came back in there. And then my mother and two, a brother and a sister moved to Woodward uh, in 1923. Mm -hmm. So you could attend school, high school? Yes. I, what was the population of Supply at that time? I don't know whether I can tell you or not. It, uh, because of the people that, some of them lived uptown that worked at the hospital, there was always, Supply has always been a pretty fair little town. And of course, the, the lake and the dam didn't yes. hurt it any. It helped it. But I don't remember. I've got one old Supply clipping about the Hudson Valley basketball team. I want you to tell paper. about that. I was in a supply paper, uh, and that was quite a while ago. Of course, the team, when we started that team, I was about this tall, and Bob was a little shorter. Uh -huh. How old were you? We was all knees. I'd say I was about uh, 11, and Bob was about 9, when we started a brother's team. And then we kept that brother's team until I finished high school. They were and we played. Expensive. We played a lot of basketball games, and we made two trips to Harrison, Arkansas, and at Christmas times, and played back there. Now Arley was a promoter for these kind of things, mm -hmm. and uh, he was the oldest boy, and he yes. he was a promoter. But we we played in the city leagues here in Woodward, and we played town teams. Mm -hmm. We played Cameron College from Lawton. Uh, we played the Redheads, the girls' basketball team. Oh. And uh, uh, that's Arley promoted all that. Yeah. And he, uh, but I'll tell you one thing, and I'll say it in all sincerity. I never participated in any sport that I felt as close to the teammates as I did on that brother's basketball team. Oh, sure. We were close. Yes. Very it's fun. called their brothers basketball team. Hudson Brothers basketball team. There are five brothers in the team. There's five brothers. Now, I'm interested if you put that in there for anything. The Clark boys at Mutual had a brothers team. They didn't play as extensive as we did, but we played them. And the Maury boys from May had a team. Hmm. Maury's. Maury's. George Maury. George Maury and his brothers. Well, I didn't know that. That's right. They did. Mm -hmm. Well. There was enough of them. I think there was, I think there was six of each one of them. But I'm not sure about that. We played the Maury brothers, and we played the Clark brothers and Mitchell. And, uh, if I remember right, the Hudson boys did a lot of winning too. Well, I think we were fortunate enough to win our share, but I, and we wasn't an outstanding basketball team by any means. <laughs> but we was. I think you're modest. <laughs> well, <laughs> I might be modest, but I. I'm sincere, what I say. Mm -hmm. Now, the Phillips team I played on was a little different team. Mm -hmm. uh, they had, we had Ed Hughes for supply. He made the difference, and he could take four ordinary players and put him with them, and you had a different basketball team mm -hmm. than you would with five. Mm -hmm. When did the uh, hospital start in supply? When, did, when was it? The Western State Hospital? Mm -hmm. To me, it's always been there. Well, to me, it's as always been there. So far as there I was a fort that. at one time. I'm yeah. aware of that. Uh -huh. But uh, when they made a uh, hospital to care for the mentally mm -hmm. incompetent, uh, I'm not sure. I'm not either. We'll but, have to go over there sometime. Yeah. But it. Uh, What'd you do after high school? Pardon? What'd you do after high school? What I do after high school? 
Well, when I finished high school, I was working at the Baker Hotel as a clerk. And I'd worked my way up. I'd bell hopped, and I'd done the whole gamut. Then, after I left the hotel, I had a job traveling for, uh, working for a Coca-Cola bottling company here in Woodward. And then I farmed. And, uh, How bad did the Depression affect you and your family? Well, we got married in 1933 to start with. And uh, I knew what it was to work for $54 a month. Because I did. I knew what it was to referee basketball games in a tournament for 50 cents a game. And uh, then, that was a May junior high tournament. And then I would have to crank that old Model T up, jack the wheel up, crank it up, sometimes drain the oil, try to warm it a little bit before I get started. And, uh, and I refereed 14 years. And I, I think it was my love for the sport that caused me to do it because I don't think the money at that time was that lucrative. I think seven and a half. So most of I got paid for refereeing two games, and I drove all the way sometimes to do that. But I loved basketball. It kept me in touch with the youngsters, kept me in touch with school officials, and uh, by officiating, uh, I would do over again if I had the opportunity. You love to work with young people. Yes, I like young people. When did uh, you stop officiating? 48 was the last 48. season I worked. Mm -hmm. I had promised my wife that uh, when our daughter got in high school in ninth grade that I would quit officiating. And uh, at least that's one promise I kept. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what do you think about the Olympic basketball team? Well, I think there was an exceptional bunch of athletes, and I think that they they played good ball. Uh, I think that the publicity was well. They had lots of publicity. Mm -hmm. I'll put it that way. Uh, if they had all boys like this boy from Oklahoma, I don't know if they'd have any problems or not. Because I think he's a very unusual college athlete with the attitude he has or the ability he has. And I, I mean that from the bottom of my heart. I've been around basketball and sports quite a bit. I officiate some football when I officiate him. But the last 17 years I worked, before I reached 65, I worked for Oklahoma Blue Cross and Blue Shield, called on employed groups, and trying to sell them hospital and surgical benefits. And then I worked with schools, and I enjoyed the schools I worked with immensely. Uh, but again, I was into a field that the cost was just going like this in health care, and it wasn't easy. I guarantee it wasn't any free ride. Yeah. But I, you, you, you want a challenge, and I, I feel pretty fortunate. Uh, she knows she was at the funeral, but I uh, lost my wife two years ago, in July. And uh, she and I was married 48 and a half years, and she was a wonderful girl. She was a very, very sweet person. And I got married the other day. And it kind of surprised me, but I married another sweet girl. Mm -hmm. And I knew her a long time before I married her. But be that as it may, I. Uh, I was thankful I wanted to reach 50 years mm -hmm. of married life with Ellen. How many children did you have? Three. And name them for us, please. Marilyn. Where is she now? She's in Champaign, Illinois, and her husband is a professor at the University of Illinois, and she teaches the public school. Uh, they're a happy family, a Christian family, and just as happy as they can be. My two boys, had Keith is the oldest, he lives in Enid, and Jim is our youngest child, and he lives in Enid. 
and they both, I see them pretty regular. Yeah. But uh, Marilyn called us last night. She was, well, we we had thought that we was in a hurry to get married, Fern, I wouldn't. And uh, then we decided Marilyn Marshall was down here for two weeks. Mm -hmm. Fern said one day, she said, you know, it's kind of a shame. We let Marilyn go home to Illinois, and then we get married the next week, 10 days, two weeks, and she said, I don't think we ought to do that. Mm -hmm. So we just, we just had the family in, had a small wedding, mm -hmm. and got it over with. How bad the dust storms around Fort Supply? Well, when that one dark cloud hit, I was living here in Woodward, and I was working for Coca-Cola Bottling Company. Uh, that... What were you doing when that cloud rolled in? I, I looked out and saw it. And I was living on Webster, down there at West Old Yoko's Grocery, uh, which is between 9th and 10th Street on Webster. And Elmer LeMunion lived next door to me on the west. And I went and knocked on his door. And I said, what in the world do you think that is? And he came out and looked, and he said, well, I don't know. And I said, well, boy, that is black, isn't it? Well, I'll tell you it, that one cloud rolled through here, and you couldn't see much. Now, you just couldn't see much. And, uh, but I remember, I remember the dust bowl, and I remember the wind blowing, and the dirt blowing, and the dust blowing. Uh, the thing that comes back to me about all that was that Arley was uh, in trading then. Mm -hmm. He was out there on the place, and he, he traded, he'd trade for anything. Mm -hmm. And there'd be people contact him and want him to come and, and buy their stuff. Mm -hmm. They wanted to go somewhere. They didn't know where they wanted to go, they wanted to go somewhere. A lot of them went west. Well, he went out there and, and he'd buy horses, cows, chickens, and the whole thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's what I remember about it more than anything else. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. Uh, and they don't know that they're stopped that right now. We hear for the right, tornado. We hear for the tornado, 47. Was I here? Yeah. Uh, I live three miles west of Fort Supply on a farm. And Ellen was nervous. Mm -hmm. And she could see this deal coming across. Could she see the tornado, the funnel? No, we couldn't see the funnel. We could just see the flash of light. Mm -hmm. She was after dark. Mm -hmm. Just the flash of light. She said, that's tornado. That's tornado. That's tornado. I said, oh, honey, just calm down. It's all right. I tried to get her to play dominoes. Tried to get her to play cards. And no way could I get her to settle down. And finally, a general rain came on the line. And there was somebody who drove from Woodard to Fort Supply and said that, that Woodard was blown away and what wasn't blown away was burning. <laughs> That's an awful rain to get in the middle of the night. And I fought mud and got out of there and got the supply and left Ellen and the kiddies there and picked up Arlie's son and we come to Woodard. But That's where I was living. And we come in here and the roof had just lifted off his house. All oh, the devastation in here was something else. It just blew pretty near half of this town away. Well, there was a big fire. Oh, yes, yes. I can understand. Uh, Over north. Somebody uh, getting excited about that. I don't understand. Well, no, they thought it was... But... I don't know. That's where I live. I was actually out there. But what? I came in here and helped that night and helped some the next day. What'd you do? What'd I do? Yeah. Well, what, uh, there's two or three things I did. One was, I tried to identify some bucks, and I knew people pretty well, I went to high school there, but I didn't identify but one bunny of all they showed me. Were they all covered with mud, like we've heard? They just had sand drove into the skin, you couldn't recognize them, they didn't look like them. Right. And they had them stacked up in the funeral homes, and I went and got a paling fence, and we built a deal where they could lay them up on paling fences, we just tore fences down around the funeral home. And then I went and got gasoline. They brought in a portable electric plant, see, with the gasoline motor. Mm -hmm. And I went and carried gasoline from the service station up there and put it where, the, where it was safe and where they could get mm -hmm. to it so they'd have gas to run that motor. 
Now that's some of the things that I did to try to be of help. I wasn't trying to make the front page. I wasn't trying to get the headlines. I was just trying to help. And that's what I did. How long will turn it on for now?